Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I'm Mayor Drew. Thank you for being here tonight. Really appreciate uh, your participation. Um, uh, obviously, this plan uh, is very important to our community, both for public safety reasons, for the future of development of the riverfront. There are a number of implications here, and it's tremendously important that we get uh, as much public input as possible. So I deeply appreciate you being here. Um, the, the staff from DOT. Uh, has been working on this plan for a while. Uh, this is just a conceptual plan. They need to hear from us tonight as a community. So uh, they're going to make a presentation. It's going to be about 15 minutes. Uh, when they're finished, please share your ideas. Please ask them questions. Uh, and once again, thank you so much uh, for being here and for participating because your voice is very important in this process. At this time, uh, I'll turn it over to Will from DOT. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, my name is Will Britnell. I'm the principal engineer of the State Highway Design Section at the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Uh, did everybody get a handout? No? Okay. They're up here at the front table. We'll get them out. Uh, our names are on there. Our contact information. Uh, there's also a copy of the plan. And there's a comment form in there as well. At the end of the presentation, um, if you want to go home and, and uh, write up a comment, you can use this comment form and mail it in to us. Um, so there's also, like I said, our contact information is on there, uh, as well as some basic information uh, that we're going to cover here tonight. So uh, I do encourage you to get one of those. Uh, we also we do have a sign-in sheet up front. If anyone hasn't signed in, uh, if you can do it sometime before you leave tonight, we appreciate that. Um, so what this is, uh, as the mayor indicated, this is a conceptual plan, uh, meaning that this is not an actual design. This is really just a, a again, it's a conceptual plan, and. We're here tonight because we want to know what you think of this. Is this something that you want us to proceed with? Uh, if you do, then there are next steps which we'll cover um, and we'll, we'll explain where we go from here. But being here tonight really is to, is to get your uh, thoughts on the ideas that we're going to pre uh, present here tonight. I'm going to introduce the staff that we have here. And again, these names are on your handout on the far left. It's Tim Wilson. He's our manager of highway design. Next to him is Manny Perez, who is the, the actual um, designer of this project. Next to him is Dave Harms, who is our project manager. And to my left is Eric Jarbo, who is the project engineer. Uh, he's the one that um, is really responsible for the design of this project. And he's going to go through the rest of the presentation. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Eric. Thanks, Will. Thank you all for coming. So as Will mentioned, it's Project 82309. It's a uh, concept study for the reconfiguration of Route 17 Highway of the Route 9 North. We went through the introductions already. <coughs> Project location. You can see it. So route 9 along the river and Route 17, where Route 17 gets onto Route 9 North. Uh, we're just south of the uh, the traffic signals on Route 9. There's a closer view. We have uh, the YMCA is located here, the hospital, and this is the uh, canoe club. The purpose of this project is to address the safety concerns in Route 17 on ramp onto Route 9 North. The past crash, crash experience from January 2010 to December 2012. Uh, which is a three-year period where it's a total of 375 reported accidents. This ramp has been classified as the number two on the department's statewide list of high-frequency crash locations. That 375 accidents, we just want to know that that's reported accidents. It's um, possible that there's actually a higher number due to unreported accidents. Um, if, if they weren't if they weren't severe, the 96 percent of the accidents are rear end type accidents. This is a, a view of the stop signs uh, before you enter onto Route 9 North. And this is a view over your left shoulder as you're waiting at that stop sign where you would have to accelerate from the stop and merge directly into the rightmost travel lane where the red dump truck is. The proposed solution at this location is to remove the stop sign, provide an adequate acceleration lane, and also to reconfigure the Route 17 So the removal of the stop sign and the addition of the acceleration lane 
Uh, we would need to widen the existing Loop 9 bridge that goes over Union Street. Uh, that bridge is only two lanes wide. We would need that third lane for the acceleration lane. And then this would be the acceleration lane which runs along Harbor Drive. Or, yeah, Harbor Drive. The weave that I mentioned before is just prior to uh, the Route 17 bridge that crosses over Route 9 and then merges onto Route 9 North. So this location right now, there's uh, the lane striping uh, is not well defined. So we would propose to clean that up and provide uh, two lanes that cross, um, that, that head Route 9 North and then one single lane that would head Route 9 South. This would basically remove all the vehicles that are heading that are on Route 17 and are traveling to Route 9 North. It would remove them from the weave that goes on at that location, uh, so that would clean up some of the maneuvers there and uh, and, and, and make this weave uh, function better. At the uh, at the bridge, the Route 9 bridge over Union Street, you can see that the intersection of River Road, Union Street, and Harbor Drive is directly under the existing bridge. Uh, it's already a, a tight area, it has poor geometry, sight lines aren't that great, um, and I think it offers a lot of confusion to drivers when they approach this intersection, if, if multiple vehicles approach at the same time. With the widening of the bridge, we certainly do not make it better, uh, we make it a little worse, and, and you can see right here this conflict makes it uh, pretty difficult to construct the bridge, also maintenance of the bridge. Uh, this is increasing, increasingly difficult with this intersection, so we propose to shift that intersection across Zunder Creek, tee up, realign the, uh, the intersecting roadways. And Harbor Drive, uh, there's currently uh, functions basically as an on-ramp. We looked at this as an opportunity to possibly eliminate that on-ramp, which would present some opportunities to changes the character of the roadway and um, functions now as a local access road. So there's the uh, possibility for some other amenities that are, that are not feasible with, uh, with it functioning as an on-ramp. We brought this up. We worked closely with the city. Uh, we also worked with the Riverfront Committee that the, that the city had uh, for the redevelopment of the the whole riverfront area, and uh, we also uh, met with the, the owner of the restaurant. The only real concern with this option was the uh, the, the vehicles that were now that were using this ramp. Where are they going to head? That was one of our concerns as well. So we did a uh, traffic study, and you can see here we have all the volumes uh, for the entire area. We also have projected volumes out of 20 years analyzed it and right here this is actually the on-ramp there's 500 uh, vehicles in the peak hour that use that ramp uh, and that number is actually fairly low a typical ramp you see around 1200 to 1500 vehicles in a peak hour a high volume ramp would be somewhere around 2000 vehicles an hour so the, the number that we're dealing with the number of vehicles is actually fairly low those vehicles right now they use uh, if you're in this area you would head east on Union and then get right onto Route 9 North. If that ramp were closed, there was a few alternatives. This was the more dominant route that we found because of the right turns are, are actually an easy maneuver to make through intersections where vehicles in this area, they're on Decoven, could head south on Decoven, take a right uh, onto Cooley Avenue and then a right, and a right onto the ramp. It's also possible to, uh, if you're in the Main Street area, you head south on Main Street Get on. We also saw vehicles that would actually bypass the entrance at Route 17, they're heading 17 North, to avoid that stop sign and that stop control on ramp, and they would head on South Main and then uh, down Union and actually use the on ramp that we proposed to close. We looked at all those intersections that were uh, that could be potentially affected by all the redistributed traffic and. Uh, the three intersections that could benefit from some improvement with these three intersections. Many of the intersections, they actually remain the same. Uh, few of them actually function better. Uh, 
such as, for instance, this intersection here, Decoven, we eliminated a large number of left turning vehicles from Decoven onto Union. You can see why they would, they would head straight, which is a much easier maneuver for an intersection to handle. So these three intersections, the proposed improvements uh, at Cooley and uh, South Main, uh, or Main Street Extension, we proposed a, uh, a signal light. Mostly the, the increased volume was right turning vehicles from Cooley onto Main Street Extension. Uh, however, there's a, there's a parking lot for hospital employees on Cooley Avenue in this area, and uh, the city informed us that this intersection is a problem area especially when the, hospital, when the hospital workers get out, there's a large number of vehicles leaving. Uh, so it would certainly benefit from us. So we included this in all of this proposal. The other two intersections is the interchange um, of Main Street Extension and 17. You can see on this slide where, where this ramp does not oppose uh, this ramp, where we just want to point out that would be the only uh, that would be the major reconstruction work, would be realigning that ramp, and then just the, uh, including two signals, uh, signal on each one of those. This is a close-up of that area. Uh, we have, we included some sidewalks along both sides of the road. There's no sidewalk on this side now. Um, we also have uh, dedicated left turn lanes onto the ramps and dedicated right turn lanes onto the ramps as well to improve the efficiency of these intersections. Back to the main plan. Uh, as I said, we work closely with, with the city, with the, uh, with the planning uh, department, and a riverfront uh, redevelopment committee. We looked at several uh, potential benefits to this area. It, uh, it can act somewhat as a gateway to the riverfront. Uh, there's obviously aesthetics are important in this area, so we can, these bridges we can treat aesthetically. And, visually appealing with uh, four liners and uh, uh, the, uh, the bridge rail could be a nicer bridge rail. We also looked at this bridge, uh, the underside of this bridge. Right now is uh, it's fairly dark. We do some lighting uh, to try to encourage pedestrian traffic. You can see there's sidewalks on both sides, crosswalks, and, uh, and actually a shorter sidewalk path here. Along uh, Harvard Drive, See how this roadway now functions as a, it's a cul-de-sac roadway. It functions as a local access road. Um, speeds will be much slower than, than today with the operator uh, access and on-ramp. So we're able to uh, incorporate on-street parking, pedestrian amenities, a mid-block crossing, uh, and another mid-block crossing. Uh, so this would be much more pedestrian friendly, uh, much more kid friendly, and kind of fits more with the uh, front area. If this were to go to construction, go to design and go to construction, um, we would anticipate property impacts. The majority of the work happens within uh, within the state right away. However, there would be acquisitions required on the river flood, uh, some minor impacts at the Route 17 Main Street extension intersection, the maintenance of traffic through construction, there would be the possibility of detours, alternating one-way traffic. And, uh, of course, we maintain uh, access to private properties and to uh, businesses. The estimated construction cost for this project is somewhere between <coughs> 1 to $25 million. Just to, to reinforce where we are now, this is a concept review. So the idea behind this project was to meet with the city, which we did many times, uh, meet with uh, be with the key stakeholders, which we did, we met with business owners and uh, focus groups. We also meet with the public, which we're doing now. And if this uh, concept is supported, then we could potentially move it forward and initiate a preliminary design phase. Uh, first step in that is to identify funding. Then we uh, develop our preliminary plans, determine environmental impacts, we would again meet with the city. Uh, we would meet with key stakeholders again. We would meet with the public again. That would probably take place sometime around 2016 if this were to go forward. Uh, if this project is supported, 
Uh, at that point, we can obtain federal approval to move forward with the design of the project. And that would still involve final design, with many steps of finalizing the plans, further coordination with the city, um, environmental permits, finalizing uh, rights away acquisitions, and uh, finalizing estimates. Then we still have to move to pre-construction, which would involve advertising and bidding of the, uh, of the project. And then we would work the project. We would potentially see construction sometime in the year 2018. <coughs> We're a little ways away. This is just a, just a concept that we wanted to bring forward. This would not be the last uh, public outreach. Uh, this is only the very beginning. We get a feel for it, and, uh, and if there is support, there's the potential to move it forward into an actual design, at which time there'd be a whole other series of public outreach in coordination with the city. So at this time, unless uh, anyone feels they need to add, we can answer anything. If the mayor wants to say anything, we can move into, uh, into questions. 